pencils and creating some really neat impressions using distressings. If you haven't, today's video is going to show you how you can create really cool ghost-like impressions into your distress ink blending. So what I'm doing here is I've got a piece of Bristol Smooth paper because this holds the ink really nicely and is very easy to blend on. So I'm going to be blending on two different colors of distress ink. I've got picked raspberry and I'm also going to bring in some spiced marmalade. I'm blending the colors to create a gradient between pink to yellow and then back to pink again across this card panel. So as I'm blending the ink colors onto the paper, I'm making sure to overlap them and really get a nice blend between the two because this is going to help give you a really nice transition of color. One thing to keep in mind when blending on Bristol Smooth Paper is that you're going to want to not touch the ink as you've added more color on because we'll collect fingerprints. So as you can see, as I'm finishing this up, I'm using a piece of paper to hold the other end so that I don't get any fingerprints on my ink blending. To create the ghost-like impression, I'm taking a stencil here from Simon Says Stamp and I'm misting it with water. I misted it quite heavily so that way the, the entire stencil is covered with that water. I'm going to lay the stencil onto my ink blended panel and let that sit for about a minute. After I remove the stencil, you can see we already have a ghost-like impression on the paper and it lifted off a lot of the color underneath. That created a really cool ghost-like impression and really makes your backgrounds and ink blending look fantastic. As it dried, you can see the impression got a lot more clearer and also really intense. I'm going to do some inlay die cutting here now. So I'm cutting the panel down with a stitched rectangle die and also a wonky stitched heart die, both from Simon Says Stamp. I'm bringing in a grateful word die and I'm going to cut this over top of all of my die cut pieces. I have not removed them from the cutting plates because that's going to allow me to make sure that all of my die cutting stays in the exact same place. So that way when I go to rebuild this by doing some inlay die cutting, everything will line up perfectly. So I'm going to keep both that panel that has the heart cut out of it. I'm also going to keep the heart itself and I'm going to keep all of the little negative pieces that go in between the word grateful, not keeping the actual grateful word itself. So I'm going to pop that panel up off of my card using some foam tape and then I'm going to take the heart and I'm going to add some adhesive on the back side. So this is going to lay flush onto the card whereas the outer panel is going to be popped up. So it creates a recessed effect for our inlay die cutting. Just adds a little bit of interest. If you don't want to add the foam tape, you could definitely have this entire piece flush onto your card. After I've adhered that heart onto my card, I'm going to also bring in another set of grateful words. These I die cut from some pink cardstock that I thought matched the pink in my ink blending really nicely. I cut these about five times from that pink cardstock, and I'm going to lay them into my negative areas so that way I can fill in that grateful negative area and create the inlay effect. I also added in all of those little negative pieces that go in between the word grateful using some liquid glue. I'm also using that liquid glue to adhere all of these grateful pieces on top of each other. I'm making sure to line them up perfectly and I press them down really good so that way they hold in place and then we end up with a really dimensional sentiment as you can see there on the left hand side of the screen. Next, I'm going to take some yellow cardstock, which also matched the colors in my ink blending, and I'm going to prep it with my EK Success powder tool so I can do some heat embossing with a sentiment stamp set that matches the Grateful Word die. I'm stamping the sentiment in some clear embossing ink, and then I'm going to use some white super fine embossing powder from Ranger to sprinkle that over top of my stamp sentiment. After I added the embossing powder onto my stamp sentiment, I used my heat gun to set the embossing powder and that creates a nice dimensional effect on this piece of yellow cardstock. I trimmed that yellow cardstock down into a little banner strip and then I'm going to add that over top of my card using some foam tape and I tuck that around the word grateful. I really love how that impression of the stencil looks so cool around all of our inlay die cut pieces. It adds so much interest to your ink blended background. To finish up the card, I added some Spectrum Noir Clear Sparkle over top of the word Grateful, and then that's going to finish up this card. Really quick and easy to do, and creates really stunning effects to have that stamped impression from the stencil on your backgrounds. 
I hope today's video has inspired you to do some stencil impressions of your own. If you enjoyed, please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more inspiration. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye!